What's up, you guys? Just took my pre-workout with the homie Topo right Ooh, here. Back. My boy Nate. Oh, boy Ryan. You guys probably never seen this guy. What's up, guys? Low key, Mr. Loki over yeah, here. He's a shadow. <laughs> <laughs> he's a shadow. <laughs> yes, sir. But man, we're gonna get a little bench press going on today. We got to hit some what? Four press, you said? Yeah, four press. dumbbell. So a little bit something different. But you know, we're gonna have a good time. You know, Chris is always here. Yeah. I'm waiting for him to cook still, dog. So I'm gonna the barbecue right here. I'm so a we'll shadow see. when it comes to that too, homie. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what's the, little, the great Graspy and shit? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. garbage. That's what garbage. <laughs> you ain't here for much. Yeah. <laughs> I heard that shit. Yeah, we're about to get to some uh, some content. We appreciate everyone trying to like hit us up, say like keep doing like videos together. Uh, these are my boys, so obviously we're gonna keep getting it in. But it, it's nice to see all the support that's coming out from all of us getting together and shit. Um, we actually had to stop by the weed joint place uh, before you saw my boy Chris. Uh, we had to get a little a couple presents for Pitbull. We know how he gets down. Care like package. That. Care <laughs> package. Where's that care package? It'll be, Look at this shit, man. Stop about the best dispensaries over here in Santa Ana, dog. You know we got the best stuff over here. Shout out to the homie. All right. <laughs> hit me up and was just oh, like, bro, I see what you're doing with Mookie, man. Like, you're super genuine, dude, whatever. Like, I want to, like, give this to you. I'm like, damn. Like, this is from San Diego? Yeah, dog. They, they make individual ones for, like, really? they, first I had a single one, then he gave me a double one. And he's like, you know what? I've been seeing you guys got some big boys. You're trying to squeeze people in here. And so he just gave me this big-ass custom one, man. Shout out, try some saunas. Try out, try some saunas. Chris, uh, tell you what floor press helps you with. So traditionally, when you start doing talking about uh, bench press specialty, um, you say you want to do more on bench press than you bench more. But this is once we hit that mark of like I'm in the top 10%, top 5%. Now it starts showing variation on what we have to do to make sure that we're actually making those weakness points that we have stronger points. So this one's a focus on that more top half of that bench press. Um, you only want to do this when you're solidified in your movement. So if you're a master, once you do those 10,000 reps, I'm a master of bench press. I can actually get come down and keep the same bar path every single time be consistent. Now we, we're going to transfer over to like a, a floor press with a barbell. You could do it with a dumbbell too, but we like to start out with the barbell. So then now I'm solidifying that line and my sticking points. So knowing how to transfer from lat tightness to where I'm pressing my triceps and locking with my chest. Because that's the first thing that people don't know really from bench press. They think a lot more triceps than, than your lats. So it's actually when you're coming down, you're loading the lats. Then you press off the chest with the lats. Then the triceps engage the lockout. And then you squeeze your chest on lockout. So this is the isolation of that movement. So we can actually focus on how do we transfer from coming down to the eccentric to the concentric. Now I'm actually locking my elbows out with my chest and my triceps. Like I would tell people, is like how Chris saying, like nobody, a lot of people don't use their lats when they press. So. Um, the floor press kind of really just focuses. I mean, you could even bet, like, use a lot of triceps still floor pressing. It's just like on the technique. You gotta just like open up that barbell and really like use your uh, your lats to like on the way down and on the way up. And you'll feel it like right. if your shoulders, if you're going on the way down and you're feeling everything in your shoulders and on the way up you're feeling on your shoulders, like you're doing something yeah. wrong. Um, does it matter like or what I guess benefit does it have if you put your feet up or if you put your feet like flat on the ground? Does so it make a difference? So that's all depending on your hip tightness. So you're an athlete so you probably have tight hips as the number yeah, one thing athletes sure. have. So the second you put your feet flat you, you answer your pelvic tilt your hips yeah. and so that means like kind of puts you at a better like decline. So it just depends on your tightness and how your hips are. I like to keep my feet up so I can keep like a bigger retraction thoracically like that mid part of the back. Right. So I'm actually putting my chest in a decline now opposed to like actually being like my hips being tight and not being able to get there. So you yeah. see that shoulder instantly rotate. When you come down, there's no power right here. But the second I put it at a decline, I'm in my lats and that's where the power's at. So it's more so like whatever you're comfortable with, whatever you can engage more lats right. with. So it's like a case by case, but I mean, you can work to want to do what other people do, yeah. but you have to look at you and then like have good eyes on you, like us, and be like, you should probably, you're probably more comfortable if you switch your feet flat or like whatever, you know what I'm saying? We're talking about like, uh, like uh, what's it called? People's grip and stuff. A lot of people ask me like, where do you put your grip? And like, 
it's just kind of like on what you're more comfortable with. Like me, Nate, Chris, we all like come from a football background. So like they teach you to press pretty close because they ain't going to ever press like someone like this on the football field. Everything is like really close up. So um, I'm just telling you guys like I just like I mean, if you want to be like go wide out and be strong that way, go for it. But for me, like I like having functional strength. So close grip bench like it's just going to help you with like everything just more functional. So. Um, if you're trying to just be like pretty much build more of your functional strength, definitely stick with like a, I would say like the thumb right at the knurling and then close it. That's pretty much like, like a, a good average. And then if you want to hit like extra close grip, you could probably go like right on the knurling. Just a little tip if you guys are trying to get stronger. Get on that shit. <laughs> my moment. It's my fucking moment. <laughs> he's up in the, uh, he's moving down to LA now. <laughs> And then all my food in my house is gonna be gone. <laughs> and then people gonna be coming out free meals and shit. focus on like keeping that lat and just like opening up your chest kind of like he said like the more you your your thoracic is open there's less pain on your shoulder I just want to touch on that. The, um, so he has the perfect points for, for width. I'm talking about the where you put it on their hands. So most people grab a bar and they just grab it, right? So like I'm just gonna put my like they sit the, the bar on their thumb like that, and it's actually what causes people to have flexion in their wrists. So there's not much meat behind that hand when you put it on the top where your like, calluses are. So it flexes back because it's trying to shorten the distance between the, the hand and the shoulder. So like that. So that's what happens. So if you have like fucked up wrist while you're bench pressing, it's because the way you're holding the bar. So what you want to do is hold it in the meat part of the hand. So if I'm looking at a normal person grabbing the bars like this, and that causes that flexion back like that, what you want to do is actually grab the bar for the meat part of the hand. And then once you grab, then you turn your thumb to the bar. That's actually where you want that, that meat of like the weight sitting on your hand. Like if I were to tell you to punch somebody, I punch somebody with my fist, but you're not holding the weight with your fist. But if I told you to punch someone with your palm, you're not going to punch them like that with your fingers like that, right? You're going to punch them where, that, where that actually that meat of the part of the hand is, right? So that's where you want to sit that barbell. So when you get underneath, Put your hands on the bar like this and then grab and then turn in and that naturally pulls my retraction down into my shoulders. And also too, if you know some people do that, they never build up their forearm strength because they're just letting all the weight like set on yeah. their joints and they ain't doing nothing. Yeah, we'll press it. You go really fast, but you keep it uh, tight the whole entire time. Watch when you press it. Yes, 
shit was like right, coming off, man. Yeah. Stole my money. I was gonna get it once. Crazy. I was eventually gonna get that shit. Oh shit. Right, I just wanted to say like, I mean, a big thing you can tell like when people press is like. I knew Chris was done because his his left shoulder um, came like forward. It wasn't retracted anymore. So like he's just pressing all with like his shoulders. Is this a maxed out? You need to make sure both your uh, shoulder blades are pinched on that bench as you're pressing. As soon as one comes off, like you're just unevenly like getting stronger, and it's like a bad habit to have. But all solid. Like 19. 20. You got, I mean, you got like. Oh yeah, 19 and a half. <laughs> <laughs> and a half. My reference is like 19 and three quarters. Incline dumbbell press right now. We're gonna go two sets of 12, two sets of eight. It's getting more volume. It's gonna build that base right here. What you gonna do first, Chris? I'll probably start with the hundreds, see how it feels. Sandbagging again, Sandbagging. easy. <laughs> that's, what I'm gonna start, that's what I'm gonna start with. <laughs> Good check. That's what I'm gonna start with. All right, let's see. 12 reps. Easy. <laughs> solid right there. <laughs> So we just got done doing our dumbbell incline pressing. Um, the, the reason why we do that right after the floor presses is because it's more lat emphasized. So we talked about how the lats kind of like load everything. Same thing with the incline dumbbell, because so you can see how us 
as we're pressing, we're not having our arms straight like a regular like a barbell. We're actually breaking at a 45 degree angle. So if you look at my shoulder right here, when I break that, it actually falls into my lats. So most of the time you're actually able to like incline maybe just as much or just a little bit under your flat bench press purely because there's more lat engagement. If you want to think about it like a lat pull down. So as I'm coming down, I'm, I'm pulling that shit down into my lat. That loads that punch right there. So that's what we're focused on today. You see all of us breaking out the hands, almost like saying like you have a stick in your hand, you break it. Now you want to press with it. So that's what that lat engagement comes from. Yeah, like I'll just touch the face what Chris said pretty much like when I get new people that don't know how to bench press, I always start off with like a neutral grip uh, mm -hmm. dumbbell press because when your hands are neutral, it's very easy to engage your lats. And when your hands are like this, you want to just go straight down and use a lot of like your front delt and your shoulders and your triceps. So well, when we do the dumbbell incline, you notice a lot of us, um, we're twisting our wrist just a little bit to get, like Chris said, more lat engagement. So try the dumbbells if you guys need help more getting that lat engagement. And then um, just want to let you know, every time we do like any type of pressing movements, we're always doing some type of pulling movements. So say we're gonna finish off some pull-ups and maybe some like one-arm dumbbell rows. And that's it. <laughs> Since we're being a little bit instructional today, I want to talk about like pull-ups. When every time you're doing a back movement, like my bodybuilding friend would tell me like, think about pulling with your elbows back. A lot of times people pull with their front delts like this and you see people doing like pull-ups and it's like all front delt. So think about when you pull, like pulling back with your elbows back. And that helps out. Like, you know when you front squat, like your core just needs to be like this, so like your shoulders are just a little bit like down. No, I'm just saying like you're in like you're in a flexed up position. Like when you're front squatting heavy, you're not gonna be like this. Front squat without a shirt. Like, right. Remember that shit took yeah, all the skin off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That shit took all the skin off my shirt. I have a scar. Wait, you gotta get a shirt and chop the shit out of it. I did, dog. Yeah. I had I had so much chalk on it. It was just good for one rep. Yeah, what? Like, we take, uh, we take the athletic tape around the bar. Oh. I've done 600. Oh, yeah. My max is six, but I wrap my knees actually on that one. <laughs> That's probably the one workout I would suggest for everybody that want to get the other better. That front rip, the front squats. That shit will by itself, like the quad engagement, lower back strength, how to engage your core, everything, right? everything with that. I'm feeling thick, thick. That's a thick ass boy. What's your, what's your leanest? 240. I was there like two months ago. I packed on like 40 pounds in the last two months. Damn, 40 pounds? Where are you at? Hey, we're like the same weight, Ryan. 193. Watch, I bet you we're the exact right, same weight. What shoes on? You've been 180 something for a day. See? <laughs> yeah, look at that shit. Let's go! Me I'm sorry, like, I'm like 185. <laughs> Damn, you're like 186. 186. All right, guys, let's finish up the training session. We did floor press, dumbbell incline. What else we did? Um, some pull ups. Man, we are taxed. We Chris decided to do some high rep stuff, like 12 reps on incline. We did um, an AMRAP set after we worked up to a top double on floor press. I haven't done any, well, I haven't done floor press in a while. I do incline dumbbell, but just had a solid workout. Um, I've been letting you guys know we're going to do a video at least once a week because Chris coming from San Diego. He's got kids. He's a busy man. Yeah. I'm a busy man. So once a week, stay tuned. You'll be, I'm going to be trying to drop a video. I'm planning on Wednesday, so yeah, stay tuned yeah. for Wednesday around 6 p.m. Cali time, dropping a new video with Topo and the squad. We're trying to get yeah. everyone in, but man, everyone's come, got their own thing. Fucking, where's Bruce? Like up north? He's over there doing something. I don't even know what he's doing. But young Pro Kuki wrestler. Guy. He's a pro <laughs> wrestler. So um, I know we're missing Mookie. Mookie got sick. Man, hopefully he gets better. Yeah. Being here pretty soon. But we'll it later. <laughs> <laughs> later. Yes, sir. But man, thanks for watching. Make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe, and see you guys later. Oh, yeah.